We're ready, Ben. Welcome, uh, everybody, to the uh, 20th of May workshop. Uh, we're gathering tonight to discuss uh, a draft budget, which has been uh, presented to you on uh, as a PowerPoint presentation. And I'll ask um, Martin, the CEO, to lead into the PowerPoint pr presentation and uh, we'll progress from there. Thank you, Martin. Thanks, Bim. Straight to straight to Mark. He'll take us through the process. Oh, oh, one little thing I need to say before we go too far. We did get a telephone call from Tony Passon today uh, giving us uh, advice. Uh, Bim, Bim, yep. Bim. Public. Hey? That's still a confidential announcement. Oh, OK. We'll cut that out when you do the editing. <laughs> I don't do editing. It goes up as it is. OK. All right. Well, we've got a good announcement today, so I'll let you know more details at the appropriate time. OK. Kathy Schilling, did you want to ask something before we start? Uh, no. Did I? Uh, you were just trying the lower the, the hand process. OK. Oh, yes. I was just um, showing that I knew where it was. Right. So just... Uh, one thing I will say, and uh, it's been picked up and somebody called, called me earlier, the approved long-term financial plan is 2019. It's just a typo. Mark, over to you. Thank you, and through you, Mayor. Um, I'm hoping you can see the um, workshop agenda on the screen. You're seeing it all just nod. Don't have to say anything if you can see it, because I have shared it. Yep, thank you, Joe. <laughs> So yes, that is a typo there. 2019 is when the long-term plan was adopted. That first workshop page that you're seeing on the screen is just some background information as to how the long-term plan that uh, we're working through now and the 2021 budget has been formed using those financial reports that Council has already adopted. The last one being the budget update yesterday. So that information that Council adopted yesterday, including the carried forwards, um, are included in the long-term financial plan and especially for the 2021 year and yesterday when you adopted that report there were carried forward in capital that were put into the numbers that you are seeing later on here and the very last item on that particular um, page there is that uh, the new initiatives um, have um, been um, taken out of it by the council's decision yesterday so there's none included in this particular financial report all right i went one too far didn't i let's go back one sorry and this second slide there is giving a bit more information about the um the what we're looking at here and um, that there are sub plans created for the various um entities that um, we have being used in Centennial park and the service areas, including waste and the swim service, they have their own long term plans because under Section 155, 156 of the Local Government Act, um, those two areas, those two service areas need to be self sustaining. So when we talk about the uh, increases for service charges a bit later on, they have their own operations and they have their own increases or um, charges that need to recover for themselves. Um, New Centennial Park, um, they have got a draft long-term plan they have adopted, but it wasn't considering COVID-19 when they first formed that, it was before that. And since then they have taken out for this year, for example, the 1920 year, um, in that report that you adopted yesterday, there was near $300,000 worth of loss of um, their operating result for this 1920 year and um, they along with council will need to review what they're doing for the 2021 year um, in relation to their the effect of COVID-19. And the big projects are included in here um, as much as we know today and we'll go through those a bit later. The CMT have reviewed the operating income and expansion um, and have revised the base figures that are in the 2021 budget to um, extract out as much as they can to um, get into the uh, general rate increase as low as possible, as we'll go through in a bit later. 
So I'll move on to the next slide. And those areas there of insurance, electricity and so forth are still being fine tuned. We have got estimates in there for them. So the actual budget itself for the one year, the 2021 year, at the moment um, we have got included in the draft budget option two. And that is for no indexation allowed for any service cost increases or growth. The adopted long term financial plan that we did for last year included a 2.25% increase in the service cost and estimated a 1% increase in growth. Um, and, um, and that was um, throughout the rest of the long term plan that also increased by 2.25 for a couple more years and then it went to 2.5 in the adopted long term plan. We'll get into that a bit more in detail later. I just want to cover off a few of the key points in summary on this slide here. Waste services, uh, we adopted 6.5% increase for the 2021 year when we adopted it a year ago, knowing that the state government levy was having a second increase in January this year to go to $70 for the uh, waste disposal. And the end, end result is 7.3 we need to make those services um, um, ensure that they're financially sustainable over the next 10 years and I'll go into detail a bit more in a bit later. In the swims area we had a 2.25 percent increase for this year anticipated and one percent growth but at this stage we need three percent to make sure we're covering the costs to run the swims systems. Um, operating income expenses for the rest of the areas they have been um, held as much as possible to last year's base budget um, but where there are CPI or agreements or other costs out of our control, um, they have been um, put into the base budget. Mayor Lange. Then, Sorry, hang on, Mark. Yep. Bim? Yeah, thanks. Um, um, Mark, that waste increase in January, I take it that has still occurred? That didn't change? That is correct. Uh, yeah, um, the actual increase did happen in January. It was seventy dollars to seventy dollars, but the major increase for waste services isn't in that area. We'll come to that in a minute. It's more okay. in recycling. It's recycling oh. that's hit us. Okay. Yep. And we'll cover that off in a moment. Um, the um, depreciation we've used uh, information based on the eighteen nineteen um, projections for depreciation. And that is still being assessed and uh, Martin may touch on that a little bit later during the uh, presentation. At this stage, the um, operating result for option one for the general rate increase is $92,000 surplus and option two is a deficit of $174,000. As, as we know, the numbers are before yesterday's decision by council. Um, and I'm talking about COVID-19 decision. In the capital budget, Mark, the expenditure. Mark. Yep. Um, just to be clear in my brain again, option one is a growth only general rate increase and option two is no rate increase. That is correct. And we'll cover that in a bit more detail on the next couple of slides, um, but that is correct. Option one is at the top of that slide there. There's no indexation for the service cost or growth. Um, sorry, there is including growth and options. I said that wrong around, didn't I? That's why you're clarifying me, Martin. Sorry, thank you. And option two is no increase for the service cost or the growth. And the long term plan had 2.25 and 1% built into it. Sorry, thanks for clarifying that. The capital budget um, includes at the moment in the draft is 26.5 million. The long term Sorry, plan is 13.7. Mark, can you repeat those figures, please? Sure. We'll clarify this a bit further in a couple more slides. Um, this is just a bit of a summary of it all. Mm -hmm. But the option one, at the top of that slide, I'm not sure if you can see the screen I'm sharing there or not. Yeah, yeah. Is that no index indexation for the service cost. No, no, I cost. understand that. What were the numbers? You quoted oh. some numbers. Yeah, just near the bottom of that slide, if you can see it there, um, the operating result. General rates option one is a surplus of 92. Oh, option okay, two, yeah, sorry. It's hit slightly hidden for mine. Okay. Oh, Sorry. is it in your screen? Sorry. Yeah. That's all right. Keep going. And the capital income is $8 million. So when you're looking at it from a point of view of an operating result for the year and looking over the various income types we have on the screen here, 
And what we do is we compare it to what we thought a year ago and where there are major changes to what we thought a year ago, we investigated a bit further just to see if we're on track because we should be fairly well on track with what we thought a year ago, excepting there are decisions that council makes during the year, uh, which affects those numbers and also factors out of council's control. So here you have the income showing originally a $40 million expected total for the 2021 year. Our draft budget is slightly less than that at 39.1 million. Major reason for that is that top line is because this option here is considering no increase in the rates, general rates at all. Nothing for growth, nothing for the service charges. And so that has an $820,000 impact, slightly more than that actually, but that's what the result is there um, for that option too. And if I go to the next slide, it explains a bit more detail as to um, each of those notes that were listed on the previous page. Can you see it when I move my mouse on the screen? Yep. Thank you. So the general rate option two, that's the 820 I mentioned. Uh, swims. Um, I mentioned before that um, there's an increase a bit higher than the budget. Now, what does that mean from a point of view of the day to day? And I'll say the word average Joe, even though there is no average Joe um, in relation to that. The swims area there last year, the charge was $337. So we'll be looking at going to, to around about the figure of $347, about $10 increase for swims. In the waste area, the refuse, uh, it's a 2% increase. And that is due to that waste levy we talked about. And that will be increasing from $109 for the 140-litre bin to $111. So it's only a $2 increase that we need to do to offset that. Because there are such large numbers of people that are using that service, the main service, it doesn't need much of a lift to recover its costs. Recycling, however, its costs for the sorting charge, as you can see, increased by 93.7% over last year. So that cost is going at this stage from $52, as it was last year, to $64 per uh, collection, which is a 23% increase over last year. And lastly, on that list there of the waste area, the green organics, there's a, there's a disposal cost increase of 4%. So we're looking at increasing that from $57 to $59, $2. So the three waste services are going up by $16 and the swims will be going up by ten dollars um, and then we look at um, other areas here just providing a bit of a summary of the reasons why income is a little bit less than what it was last year for example we don't have the upper torrens land management in there there's other funding here is the reasons for those changes from what we thought a year ago mark hold on carla yeah, just a quick one, Mark, on the recycling. Why did those sorting charges increase so much? Do you know? I will um, pass over to the director, if you like. Gary, he's online, I can see. Yes, thanks, Mark. Uh, yes, uh, Carla, the, uh, our site recycling material uh, is uh, taken to Norma, and Norma basically have increased their gate-taking costs uh, which obviously is passed on to all uh, councils uh, that uh, utilise the service. And the main reason for their increase is because they haven't been able to uh, dispose of some of the material that they previously had. So, Gary, it's fair to say that's linked to the significant issues in the recycling industry as it currently stands? C correct. So, yeah. Norma is obviously trying to uh, uh, send their material interstate for processing. Uh, but some of those contracts equally have not uh, fruitioned. So, uh, yeah, they're definitely their cost to process has gone up. Thank you. Thank you. I won't talk about the general rates options at this stage. We'll leave it to the last two slides, if that's okay, because that's probably the um, one of the main conversations that Councillor needs to, um, to have. So if there's no more questions on the revenue, I'll move over to the um, expenses area. If I can find my mouse. Hmm. 
Okay, we have a winner. So operating expenses. Um, there's the main areas that we focus on in our income statement for expenditure. And um, as you can see there, it's a reduction of $390,000 over what we thought we were going to do a year ago. Um, and I'll cover off the main items of that on the next slide. So the top one there was the employee costs. Uh, there was a net saving of 198000 and there's an addition there at the start, the website moderator, but there are a few other items on there which have been the effect of reducing some of the costs there, and they're the major ones. There's lots and lots of um, Mark, can you hang items. on? A Martin, can you see that um, Russell yep. left his hand up? Yep. Okay, all right, cool. Russell? Uh, through you, Mir, um the employee costs, does that include a predetermined enterprise bargain increase in uh, salary costs? Yes, it does. The um, enterprise bargaining agreement for the ASU is 2%, uh, which starts in November again. It's uh, not in the financial year. Um, and that's for the 12 month period following that. And the um, AWU is um, being negotiated at the moment. So we've got an, an amount in there to allow for that. Thank you. Russell, you put your hand up again. Have you got another question? No? Cool. Thank you. So the next item down is the the large experts area is contracts, materials and other. And there's a net reduction at the moment of 429,000 for what we thought a year ago. And we've got some additions there first at the start there in that first paragraph, and then some reductions. One of the major reductions in there is that um, we aren't experiencing the operating costs for the big project as anticipated um, about a year ago. We thought some of these items maybe with the grants coming through, these things might be up or operational, but we weren't successful with those grants. So hence operating costs. And you will have noticed on the previous slide for income, the operating income for those isn't being realized at this stage. The other main item in that for reduction is rubble crushing. We don't need to re, uh, rub, uh, raise any rubble for the um, for next financial year's resheating program. We have enough stock. So there's a net reduction of $277,000 in that cost area. But you'll notice on the very bottom part of that slide, we also aren't recovering it because um, there's always a net re recovery because that gets used back in our programs. And there's some other items in there, um, not as significant as those numbers. We have a reduction for the financial charges, and that's because we originally had planned to take out some fixed loans during 1920 for the big project as well. And they have been delayed those projects a little bit. And so we are taking cash advance to benches, but a little later than originally planned. So those interest charges will be starting from 21-22 if we go ahead with those. Depreciation increased. That's because, as you notice, when we get down to the CapEx program, the transport program is $4 million than we thought a year ago, if Council approves it in the draft plan. So there's an increase in depreciation for those assets as they're being built. Sorry, Mark. Tony? Uh, yeah, thanks, Martin. Mark, the tile replacement, is that it for the RECs? Because I don't think we replaced any tile. We took them all off at the normal swimming pool. Is that at the RECs? Uh, no, it's one of the other pools. I believe it's Williamstown. And um, Joe may be able to clarify that, but I believe it's Williamstown. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm not aware of Williamstown, but there will be some retire replacement at the Rex. Yeah. Oh, okay. so it is, so it is so we'll the Rex. We'll, we'll follow that up and confirm. Okay, thanks, Martin. Thanks, Joe. <coughs> I'll move on to the next slide if that's okay with everyone. Right. So capital expenditure, um, I mentioned before it's $26.5 million. And this is how it's broken down into um, the main areas within the budget. <clears throat> we have the renewal spends, uh, which is building um, maintenance and replacement of significant items that are the asset side of things and recreation, 
In transport, 4.5 million. I mentioned the $4 million figure. That's where it's sitting mostly in there and also in new and upgrade. Stormwater and bridges and equipment. Now, some of those items there you'll notice have little footnotes alongside them because the ones with the one alongside them, yesterday council approved some carried forwards in the budget and also at the second quarter review, council approved some carried forwards at that particular point there. So those numbers are inflated, as it were, by those capital programs that aren't being done in this financial year that have been moved to next financial year. Along with that, the number twos in there are where councils made some decisions during the year um, to include in next year's program. Three, the tennis and netball clubs is, is starting off with some replacement of the surfaces that needs to start. There was a program that council adopted in July last year for that. Item number four in that top line, in the future years for building renewal, we have reduced that down to $300,000 per annum. Previously, that was sitting between four and $500,000 per annum. And during this financial year, uh, when Council has the infrastructure asset management plans completed, um, that will inform all of those renewal pro programs that are listed up here to ensure that Council is spending enough on its existing assets portfolio to make sure that um, they are there for the long haul as long as Council needs those services. And the last one there is that where it's got number five, which are these two areas here under new and upgrade, those significant numbers include, which we'll see in a different slide in a moment, the big project items that are scheduled for next year and the future years after that, as we know at this point in time. I sent uh, councillors a spreadsheet earlier on tonight just to provide a bit of information about the transport, but we'll cover that in another slide. This one here is the spreadsheet that I sent to you earlier on tonight, which proposes $9.5 million in this area of council's capital program for next year. You'll notice that there is a column here called income funding, and this is a proposed funding amount that council is going to be seeking to be able to build these or acquire these assets, these infrastructure assets. So it, if council approves this program or any one of these projects in this program, then it will be written into the business plan that if the grant funding isn't successful, then the projects will be very unlikely to proceed because it needs that income to help fund these projects in the current form that they're in. And on the Marco, which which is consistent with the approved next phase plan. So 60% cost, 40% uh, grant funding or more. That's correct. The only item here that um, Matt pointed out to me today is this one. You can see my mouse moving here. This item here, the Stockwell Bridge, that's 100% funded according to the 813 and 813 cost. So that should actually say 100% there as well as these other two here. So this is the percentage that council is looking for funding to support these programs here. So if these uh, funding applications are unsuccessful, it's unlikely that these programs can go ahead in their current form. So or, or we would come back to council with whatever result we get to have another conversation. That is correct. Yes, have to come back with the council. And the spreadsheet that I sent to you earlier on tonight um, clarifies. Is there, Martin? I sent it at to Thanks. ask a question there. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask with the bridge project, Stockwell Bridge uh, widening, being on on the freight route, that won't happen. So that could put it off another twelve months or more, unless we borrowed money. So. Is there any way around that at all? Well, that's dependent on the grant outcome. So if we, we achieve 50% and we can't achieve 100, we'll come back to council to talk to you about it. Thank you. Jim? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm a little concerned with, the, and I'm just wondering whether we can get some flexibility in the budget uh, when we come back with the final budget. What concerns me is I look at the reseal program and there's um, 1.9 million in that. That's fine. I understand that's been generated from our uh, 
asset conditions. I, I get that. But what concerns me is the shoulder program has, has no funds at all. Now, when I look at a road, I, I look at the white post, between the white post, and the white post is very much part of the reseal program and part of the road network. I just wonder, when we adopt a budget line by line now, it puts a fair amount of constraints and flexibility as if they go out and find a road and they have to do shoulder work and drainage before they reseal, and if we haven't got a shoulder program, is there a way, Martin, that we can structure the budget in such a way that it's adopted that there's some flexibility to move some money from shoulders to reseals? In, we, we've had some roads in the past where we reseal and we haven't done the shoulders and the drainage. And I know I, I know Matt's keen to sort of have that done in that structured way rather than this, but I'm just a bit worried we haven't got any money there. Is there a way we can change the wording so that it gives some flexibility so that we can fix our shoulders and get our drainage fixed before we do a reseal program? Because the way I think we're structuring our budget, in the good old days, I had some flexibility that if Mount Crawford Road went under and Mount Road went over, I could move it, but the bottom line had to be within the budget. You get what I'm getting at? Yeah, I get exactly what you're getting at. So the, the, the flexibility in the budget is there, but through prior requests, the council has asked us to put together in the earth plan the roads as well. If you didn't have the roads um, within the plan, there is always flexibility within the budget because you only ever adopt the budget at the top level. That's right. So um, the, the constraint is not the budget, well, other than the money amount. The constraint is that we're saying we're going to do this, 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 this. What we could do is we could quarantine some of the other money and say 10 percent has got to go to shoulder programs. That's fine. That that flexibility exists in the budget. It's because um, I think it was the prior council that asked, wanted to start adopting all the roads and all the work within mm. that as well. So that's what mm. we're bound by. Mm. Yeah, I... I I just think it, it, it's too restrictive, you know, and we're not. I, I, and, I, yeah. I, I totally agree with you, but the council has asked us to put the programs in the business plan. Well, if we can get a, and we make no decisions tonight, but it would be good if we can get that flexibility back into it, I think. Uh, well, I'll talk to Matt and Mark about how we might be able to structure that a little bit better. Yeah. <clears throat> Councillor DeVries, actually it's a workshop so we can use first names. Dave. Yeah, look, thanks, Martin. Um, I agree with Ben. Um, I think uh, right now, more than ever, we need to be as flexible as possible. Um, this is going to be a time over the next two years, at least in my view, where um, we're going to have to be able to be reacting to changes. And if we're tying your hands or tying the hands of the staff, then I'm all for seeing that loosen. <coughs> Take our mark. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, in relation to that, previous year we used to adopt the um, budget virtually, as you can see on the screen here now, and that gave flexibility um, for the um, council to uh, move on different um, programs during the year. The only thing is, um, it doesn't help in relation to making sure that each individual budget line is within a certain criteria or uh, amount spend. And that's something that um, council will have to probably set some criteria around that to make sure that um, we're spending what we need to spend in certain areas and building what we should be building. So it, perhaps it might be a fact that council has 10, for example, program resealed and the rest is is um, is left as a as a, an amount separate to the rest. But that's what's in there at the moment um, for the um, for the infrastructure side of things. And the next slide. I go to is talking, giving you a bit of a picture of the building and recreation assets that are the new and upgrade that are in relation to the big project that's in the long term plan right now. And as you can see, there is nothing past the 23 24 year. So, whatever decisions council makes in a budget in relation to income, which we'll cover off in a moment, will affect council's ability to be able to afford to build new or upgrade assets for any significant cost apart from um, obtaining 
substantial funding through grants or um, taking out more loans or putting rates up in three or four years time at fairly high um, high jumps to be able to afford it. So once it gets past that 23, 24 year, there isn't anything in there for the big project at this stage in the long-term plan. Which is consistent with the current approved target plan. Yeah. That is correct. And with this um, iteration of the budget, it also has removed as per the second slide, I think, in this presentation, all but um, a, a small amount of discretionary spend. So Council used to have, post that 23-24 year, that $400,000 in there for discretionary spend to allow Council to do new initiatives or add to the big project plans as it's so, so fit to do so. Right now, with this affordability, there is no um, areas of contingency funds to spend apart from, as I mentioned, obtaining more funds. The previous plan had that in there. Last year's plan had those dollars in there. But this has been built around the council's um, request to investigate reducing down um, the rates, general rates income, to be able to make that sort of affordable, and we'll go through that in a moment, we had to re remove the discretionary spend and reduce the renewal plan spends on buildings to make that affordable. But that has a flow on effect, which we'll see in the next couple of slides. Is there any questions on that slide? Otherwise, I'll move on to... Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you get my at, uh, Martin? Uh, yeah, I, I had one, on, uh, Mark, on the um, regional gallery. That figures in there. That's only <laughs> providing it. We get grants, money, etc. for that, isn't it? That is correct. And that is correct for some of the other items on there too. They're listed in there as proposals as well. Yes. It, it, it's based on the 60-40 funding model. If you don't get the 40, then unless you guys tell us that you want to go borrow more money, then we just keep pushing the program out. It's the only thing we can do. Okay, thanks, Martin. And these amounts here came out of the Prudential report that Council adopted in January. <clears throat> these spends here for these projects. And this is the income that correlates to much of that particular of those items in there. Uh, nearly eight million dollars worth of income in the 2021 year. Some of those have already been put in place. Some of those um, need to be applied and some of those apply to those capital programs that we just saw on the infrastructure plan that uh, we need to have this funding to be able to move ahead on those or on this council um, takes more loans or finds other sources of fundings. This is the actual income that is in the long-term draft, long-term plan to be able to um, fund some of those projects. No questions, I'll move on to the next slide. No, go for it. So the last two slides that I have here is to talk about um, general rate increases. We talked earlier on in the presentation about the service charges. Those service charges are set by council, but they are set to recover the cost to maintain those services in, the, in now and into the future to make sure we have enough funds to be able to support those. General rates don't have that same control, as it were, from a point of view of the Local Government Act. The general rates is set by council and it could set its rates so that, we, that it is setting a rates that is creating an operating deficit position or a surplus position. But to ensure financial sustainability, council needs to look ahead more than just one year. And that's the reason why every year council is required under local government act to prepare a long-term financial plan and to have a look at some key financial indicators to see how they look over those that 10-year plan 
to see whether or not there is a sustainable position or is a decision being made for one year or two years going to create problems down the road, down the track, that it courts cause itself to be in an unsustainable position. This particular option one, as it says at the top of the slide here, there is no indexation for service cost increase and includes growth at 1%. Currently, a week ago, that was sitting at 0.66. This week, that growth factor is now sitting at 0.7%. So we're slowly making our way towards that 1% that we, we sort of set as an uh, amount that we expect to get from new development, new housing, new customers. And that there is then generally meaning that we're getting additional revenue for those new customers because they weren't assessments before or they were land assessments before and now they've become residential, so they have a house on them. So the valuation's higher. So if council left their rates in the dollar at the same as they did last year, technically council would get more revenue because the valuation, the multiplier, is a higher amount than what it was last year because of that growth in services. And that's the other side of it is, is that when we have more customers come online, there is normally a higher demand, just exponentially, for more council services, which means council's capacity needs to increase from resources, from a funding, um, because the number of services has just gone up. So that's what growth is always measured each year to see how much growth we do have in the in the valley. And then normally that is increased to the total general revenue that council is trying to get for the rates to be able to afford to fund those new clients, those new customers that we have to provide services for, whether it be footpaths, whether it be um, new roads, et cetera, et cetera, that we're now maintaining and eventually have to main, replace. And that's what depreciation is about. So depreciation goes up and that affects council's bottom line because of those new assets that's been brought on the books. And that's what the growth does. The growth income funds those new services that council is taking on from developers or people just putting on new houses on vacant blocks. So as you can see, some of the key indicators that council has here is operating surplus. And the very top line in that table shows that at the moment we're forecasting a $92,000 surplus. Sorry, Mark, then, can I just, yep. Russell's had his hand up for a little while. So. Sorry. Russell? <clears throat> Mark, it won't matter when I chime in. I just want to understand um, that what you're showing with the operating surplus deficit line there in option <clears throat> one is that then starts compounding as a loss. Are we, what are we doing with the rates in the out years beyond this present uh, year sure. that we're setting the rates for? It's some, through you, Mayor, it's something I should have included on this slide. I was thinking about it after the fact is that last year's long-term plan slash budget um, allowed for the next three years an increase of 2.25%. And then after those three years was 2.5% for the remaining seven years. What we've got built into this one is um, a zero increase for the service costs, but we've got a 1% increase for growth for all 10 years. And to make up some of the revenue that we've lost in this year 2021 in this option, we've had to increase the service charge by 0.5% for the next two years, and then by 0.25% for the next seven years to try and make up some of that ground of revenue that's been um, traded, as it were, in this first year. So even still with that loss of income at the start, as you saw in a previous slide, it was an $820,000 difference between what we thought a year ago and what we do now. So that $820,000 is every year. That's $8.2 million. It's, it's affecting the actual 10 years um for option two and this one is affected slightly less than that because we've included growth in that first year so the growth is not lost and that's about 265,000 that we're not losing over the other option because of the fact that we're suggesting in this option that we include growth because they are new services they weren't clients as it were last year so they didn't have the same rates charged as they did a year ago 
it's a new charge for them in most of the cases. So the first line there, the operating surplus result is affected so, significantly. Mark, yes. Mark, it's actually more than 8.2 million because you're not compounding the impact of every year of the 820, so it's probably more like nearly 9 million. You're right, you're right, yep. Councillor DeVries? Yeah, and I just wanted to uh, push that again, that um, it, it's not just the compounding. Uh, so it's uh, we if, if we don't include growth, what we're basically doing is we're saying to the new people coming in that they're not effectively contributing or towards the new services that are being picked up by them. It's by being picked up by everybody. So we're, as I understand it, then what we're doing is we're, um, by not including growth, we're taking a big hit. Uh, we're providing more services, and and everybody is paying for that down down the track. Is that correct? Probably explain that really poorly. I'm sorry. No, that is very correct. Cool. And so the the first indicator there, KPI number one, which council has adopted a target there, was that in any five year period going forward, when you added all the numbers up, it would be a surplus position. But as you can see for that line there, it's actually $4 million deficit when you add the five years up in this scenario. Um, and I'll just say at the outset, Council has adopted these targets, but you are allowed to go outside of those target ranges and adopt a plan to do that if you think that's appropriate, as long as you look at the big picture in the long term to say there is a definite trend or a definite movement to get back where Council has said it should be to be sustainable. But the very first line there for the operating surplus is in a deficit position for the whole nine years of the 10 year plan. Um, and um, But it will probably possibly on that same trend get back into surplus in year 11. So it's Mark, not me. Mark, just hang, just hang on a second. Um, I think, uh, Martin's had to duck away for a moment, and I, I reckon I've seen uh, John Angus's hand go up, and there was somebody else's that I missed that just yep. went up. I think Fine, that was. Odd. Yeah. Okay. So, John, do you want to ask your question? Yes, please, Bim. I've just taken my headset off. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. All good. Um, I don't think. Um, I'm just trying to think how Dave described it. It's not my understanding that um, the natural growth would ever be discounted. It's not like people who subdivide a block or build a new house would not be charged rates. We would receive those rates anyway. Um, uh, look, I'm, I'm thinking that option one is an option, but it needs to be modified. Option two probably is not an option for us at all. Um, and while I'm here, I'm just reading, just define a CAD loan, Mark, and also sure. have we, because I probably know what it is, but I've forgotten, but we've obviously also got a balloon payment in 24-25 of three and a half mil. Uh, is that factored in as well? Sorry to be long-winded. It's all, it's all good, all good questions. Um, a CAD, uh, sorry for the abbreviation in there. It's an LGFA loan that we um, we receive. It's a cash advance debenture, and it's a facility where council has just did one last month um, because of COVID-19 um, to relieve some of the pressure for the rate deferrals. And council approved a three million dollar facility with the LGFA to allow council to go into an overdraft, as it were, and draw down the funds as it needs. It's all short term. It's not a fixed interest, it's at the current interest rate, whatever that is, and we will draw down on that as we need it and pay it back when we have money in the bank. So it's a short-term loan facility where the other one that we normally do are the fixed loans, which are 10 years, 20 years, and that second question of yours in relation to the $3.5 million balloon payment is a fixed loan that council set <clears throat> um, 10 years ago, and it's part of the, um, the, the, the REX build. And there's a three, we, we, we couldn't actually lock it in for the 25 years. We had to lock it in for 15 years. And at the 15 year period, which is in 24, 25, council then has a choice to either repay the three and a half million dollars if they've got money in the bank, 
or to extend it for the remaining 10 years at the going interest rate at the time. Um, and at this stage, the way this long-term plan has been built is that we are paying that $3.5 million back to the LGFA. So hence, there's a, a large um, um, principal payment in that 24, 25 year or money coming out of the bank, as it were, to pay for that. And that's currently being afforded in here from a cash perspective. The cash perspective on this 10-year um, plan is not that bad. The highest that council gets to in relation to um, the KPI number three, which is the net financial liabilities ratio, is 71%. And then it goes back down to 26.2, unless council borrows more loans in you know a few years time or whatever. This has got the loans built in there at the moment of 8.2 fixed loan for the big project and a million dollar use of the CAD facility. And in this year here, once again, it's a mixture of fixed loans and the CAD facility in the year 21, 22, 22, 23, and 24, 25, to make sure that we have enough cash. As you can see, the cash balance is the line here. That shows the balance of the bank at the end of the year. All right, Mark, that line there, cash balances. Mark, we've got two queries. So David DeVries. <clears throat> Uh, I think um, Don was first, so I'm happy to oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Don? <clears throat> was Don, yep. All right. Yeah, thank you. Just a, uh, I'm trying to get some feeling of the pain that's been felt out there by ratepayers, and, and Mark <coughs> might be able to help us. How many people have actually applied at this stage for rate deferrals, and uh, at what area are they spread around? Are they concentrated in one particular area or fairly uniform across the uh, across the board? I've got that prepared for you because I knew you'd ask that question, Councillor. Um, no, I actually had it ready for yesterday's um, council meeting. Up till yesterday morning, we had 139 applicants for um, to have a rate deferral uh, approved, and uh, that was $162,000, of which four of those have paid now, anyway, uh, four of the 139, so they must have been okay. And 71 of those are residential, uh, 43 were commercial, and 18 were primary production, and the rest are made up of vacant land and other, and a couple of other areas. So 139 in total. But most Thanks, Mark. Are, very much appreciated. No worries. Which so, is well below, Don, well below initial estimates. So we were budgeting up to a couple of million. Yes, we we, were, we had 1.5 million built into the third quarter third quarter review, um, but the actual rates aren't due until early June. Yeah. So we we're anticipating we'll get some more, of course, when people start to dig their notice out to pay it, perhaps too. Um, so, um, but that's what's allowed for in this plan as well is the 1.5. Hence, that's why we're utilising the two million dollars in the CAD loans this year to offset some of that if we need it. If we don't need it, we won't draw down on it. It's just David, there as a facility. David DeVries? Yeah. And, um, and then it's Tony Hearn. I'm, I'm going back to the natural growth thing. I think what I was trying to say, and I don't think I said it very effectively, was that natural growth really, <clears throat> when we levy natural growth on the rates, the natural growth is not felt by each individual rate payer. So it, the, the current rate payers that we have don't actually get hit by that in effect all it's doing is it's we're collecting rates from the new rate payers and they're helping to grow the pool if you like and that's the natural growth it's the fact that we're actually picking up rates from rate payers that we weren't getting before but we're not actually picking up any more money from the current rate payers so in effect they are more or less under that process still having their rates <clears throat> left alone we are still gaining some revenue, but we're not getting it from the current ratepayers. We're basically allowing the new ratepayers to contribute to the pool. And the reason why we do that is because if we don't do that, then the additional services that we need to provide for them need to be borne by everybody else. That That's kind of a better explanation, I hope. Is that is that tally, Mark? You seem to be nodding your head when I was, yeah, good. Okay, sorry, because I, I, I'm sort of doing this for the benefit of anyone listening in, John Angus, because I think we're trying to be as uh, as transparent as possible to the community. Thank you. So, Tony, as you can, so 
just, just thanks to Martin. Just a quick one, Mark. Uh, your, I agree with uh, John that uh, option one is probably the only way we can go. But with no I indexation, on those first couple of slides, didn't you have some rates there or some increases of 2 and 3%? Is that in the uh, indexation, indexation services or the rate revenue calculations? Sure. Thank you. In the uh, 2021 year, the, in this particular option one, we're including 1% growth revenue increase over last year's general revenue. So we're virtually taking last year's general rate revenue and multiplying it by 1.01 .01 to come up with the revenue that is for 2021. The future years, 21, 22 and onwards, uh, we have factored in a higher increase than we had in the previous year's adopted plan to try and make up some of the ground. Otherwise, this uh, operating position would be even a worse position. So it's 2.75% for the rest of the nine years. Yes, because I mean, this we're only looking at this uh, rate freeze, for want of a better word, just for the first year, aren't we? Sorry, can I just chime in there and just can we just be really careful about language? It's not a rates freeze because the distribution effect will be impacted by evaluation outcomes. And um, when that resolution was debated by council and put up by Carla, we were very careful to say that valuation outcomes will still mean that some people will potentially go up a little bit and some people will go down because it's a product of the valuation. So I've got to be really careful about the language. Um, this is not a rate freeze because of that valuation impact, and that's something you can't control. Yeah, yeah understood, Martin. I apologise there. No, you don't have to apologise. I just want to be really, really clear. Yeah, yeah no, I can understand what we're trying to do. Uh, Mayor. I'm just wondering if someone can just, uh, Mark, um, you, you mentioned catching up in the future years, and I just pose the question if, if trying to catch up is 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 a good sound financial position. Sure. But at this stage, if we do not um, actually in future years to recover some of the um, rate revenue, this financial position would be in a worse position, worse projection position if we don't do that. So either council decides to um, increase the 2021 rate year more than just growth, even for example, if it were to put in 0.5% as an increase over last year's general rate revenue, because we've got to bear in mind too that the value of general, as the CEO has pointed out, will provide us with an updated set of valuations for all the properties, and they will have gone up as well from the previous year, overall on average. And what I'm suggesting is that perhaps the council needs to consider a small increase in the 2021 year, and that will have the effect of being able to reduce perhaps some of the forward years um, and not having them carry too much and, and let this year have nothing. But that's an option that council can consider. So I could just add, I mean, the, the, that's a lever, which has been slightly increased and it is still in my mind that to pull some of this deficit back, we're still going to have to have some conversations about savings and efficiencies. And um, But without doing some of these things, you're going to have to have a serious conversation about service level reductions. The next one is Cathy Schilling. Thank you. Um, yes, my question is about the two options. Um, I was of the opinion that we would increase service costs but not um, rates, but include growth. So my first question is about the options because I don't see that in option one or option two. And won't we manage the spe uh, our spending on how we – or how much we spend on projects? So at the end of the day, we can manage uh, or offset the budget by how much we spend. I'll have first go at that one, Cathy. Um, you can pull multiple triggers. What this one does is we've already pulled some triggers to try and reduce operating costs. And you can't uh, can't adjust the operating costs in a blink of an eye. You can obviously reduce capital a little bit. 
Um, it's it's my advice that the council continues to try to and should try to ramp up capital spending to support the community's um, economic base. Um, the option one, Mark can talk about this in more detail, but the option one most closely resembles exactly what you're thinking, Kathy. So it talks about um, a zero rate increase, growth, and obviously service charges change accordingly. Um, it's still a pretty reasonable set of figures because we can afford, we still only hit 71% and it was explained by um, um, Corinne a while ago, 71% is like, um, um, you know, if you've got a $100,000 loan, you've only a $100,000 house, you only owe $71,000 on it. So that's, that's pretty sustainable. Um, future shocks, uh, we do have some borrowing capacity as things can move on. But uh, we will still have to keep looking internally for savings um, and efficiencies. And the fundamental way of dealing with operating the operating deficit is we have to reduce costs or increase revenue one way or the other. Um, and you fundamentally cannot change because um, the reality is this council and the previous council has got most of the low hanging fruit savings. Mm -hmm. We have to do it by what I call transaction cost reductions. And also, um, if it has to be, we have to have conversations about what levels of service we're providing, and that will therefore impact the community a different way. So it's not an easy conversation. Is that Mark? Did That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is correct. Yes, I think uh, Councillor Johnson's got his hand up. I'm all good to go. Yeah. Uh, Mark, I'm just uh, um, looking at this option one. I note that we there are um, substantial operating deficits off into the future, despite wriggling around. Oh, I'm quite concerned about that, and I've been uh, around a table like this at a number of discussions where um, we've approved essentially what are long-term operating losses, and I just I, I can't support that. And I'd like to uh, explore the idea of either a half or a one percent uh, rate rise, so that we at least make sure that we have even better wriggle room because this virus situation could deliver worse to come and we may find ourselves running out of wriggle room if we don't start acting now and give ourselves some time to also start looking at the sorts of things that Martin was talking about in terms of reducing our expenditure. So I, I, I'd be one who would support examining a, a modest rate increase, please. Thank you. Would um, another option that Council could explore which some of the um, other regional and Metro councils are doing is to have a, a, um, a rate rise, but also providing for a rate rebate for um, rate payers um, under a set criteria that have still been affected into the 2021 year by the uh, COVID-19, whether they still haven't got employment, whether they still haven't got their business running at 100%, um, where that they, they on application, they get a 20%, 50% rebate. So then that's targeting the actual um, customers that are still being affected into the next year, rather than a general um, everybody wins sort of scenario, which is what council is trying to do here. So if you had a combination of those two things, that may be an option. Of course, that will add to council's administration um, from a point of view of administering and having criteria to analyze some of those applications um, to ensure that they're valid. And, um, and there could be some issues in relation to just making sure that, um, that these rate reliefs are being passed on to the end users too, if there's a landlord slash tenant arrangement and those sort of things too. So I know a couple of the councils had some fairly strict criteria that I'd seen during the last few months during this lead up to this year, who provided some rate deferral relief and rebates and they had established criteria to, to make sure that it was targeting the right people. For example, we have commercial zones, three zones, 
and it may only be affecting one of those three commercial zones. So council could resolve to say, it's, if it's these industries, then these are the ones that can apply for a rebate and they have to meet the criteria. So it sort of brings it right down and targets it to certain industries rather than being everybody that can get it, can apply. So that could be an approach that council looks at too for the following year. Of course, as I said, that will add administration to the whole process rather than just reducing the rates and letting everybody do it, and that would be simpler. Um, but it um, it affects the actual bigger picture of council's financial sustainability because, um, as you can see with the numbers on the screen. Okay, we've got David. John, you put your hand up, but you put it back down. I'm not sure if you still wanted to talk. Then Carla, then Leone. I'd like to talk, please. Right, so, so it was David, John, Carla, Leone. Right, well, I'm going to do a yes, Prime Minister, and be courageous and commit political suicide. Um, I actually believe that we should absolutely include natural growth. Uh, along with Russell, I think, uh, I don't think we should be running a deficit if we don't need to. I think we should definitely be index indexing our costs to maintain our levels of service. I don't want to see any services cut. Um, and I believe that... Uh, and I've actually been discussing this with various members of the community, and this will actually go out to the community in a, in a conversation anyway, and we'll, we'll, we'll find out from them. Um, here's my concern. Um, and, and let me just put this in context. I'm about to take a pretty big financial hit uh, with my own income because of the fact that I teach a lot of Chinese students and they're not going to come down here. My wife's lost her job because she's in the cellar door at Wolf Blast, and unfortunately because she's over 65, she gets no support from the government at all. I'm not blaming that, but I'm just letting everybody know I've got skin in the game here. And right now I've got a property and an investment property, and I would love to not have to pay in, in increased rates. But I'm willing to take one for the team because I believe that if we actually allow ourselves to dig ourselves into a hole, we are going to regret this. And I think the community is going to regret this for some time. The other problem I have with this approach is it's simply not targeted. And I agree with Mark. I think we should actually look at a way of targeting relief to those who absolutely need it rather than just doing a blanket one size fits all across the community. Um, this is the old classic thing of if you earn $100 but you spend 99 no problem. And over five years, you gain five bucks. But if you earn $100 and you spend 101 then you're going to go backwards. And that difference is going to compound. So after five years, not only have you not gone forward by $5, you've actually gone backwards by five. Now you're actually backwards by 10% of your total uh, total um, money. And that, that starts to be where it's a serious problem. Now, this council took tough decisions uh, along these lines around about 10 years ago, uh, where other neighbouring councils were going for the, the, uh, the low rate, sometimes I think below uh, cost sort of sugar hit. And as a result of that, our council has been in recent times been able to increase the rates by lower than our neighbours pretty much, I think, for the last five years. I, I'm going purely from memory, but I suspect if you went back and looked at the figures, every time light puts up their rates, we're putting it up just slightly less. And we seem to be able to maintain that. And I would hate to see that money that and that effort fritted away. The other thing I'm concerned about is this. Just to give put this in context, we're talking about basically if we were to so-called freeze the rates, and I know it's not freezing, but if we were to not increase uh, the way we were describing, the benefit to the average household is about 40 bucks a year. That's less than $1 a week. It's not a huge amount of money, but we will feel the impact of that. That could affect like $9 million going forward unless we claw that back. So basically the deal is we're saying to the community, okay, we'll let you off this year, but for the next nine that follow, we're going to hit you harder than we would have if we hadn't made this decision. In other words, one step forward, nine steps back. People will still, it's not like this is free money. This rate payer money will have to be taken from the rate payers or else, or else the alternative is we cut services. And also we take the hit now, which means it's going to be, uh, it's going to mean those services are going to be delayed. The, the things which the community elected us to do, the things that we all said that we we're going to do are going to be the things that are going to be put to one side. We are going to have to start thinking about, do we close libraries, whether completely or part of the week? Um, because there is no simple way where we can just say, okay, let's save money by cutting back on administration. It never works like that because the so-called administration is legislatively required most of the time. We can't not keep records. We can't not do what we're doing now. There are just simple things which we have to have to do. We have to abide by state government rules and we have no choice. 
So we cannot, there, and as Martin has said, there is no low-hanging low hanging fruit. And to be honest, if there was, I'd be bloody furious with them because I'd be thinking, what the hell's he been doing for the last five years? That was the whole point, to find that low-hanging fruit early on. So we are basically in a situation where if we do this, if we take a give the community a, a sugar hit in the short term, I think they're going to come back to us in the long run and say that was a very short-sighted, foolish exercise. Now, I applaud the fact that we've actually gone through this process and maybe we do reduce the amount that we were planning to do. But to just flatten it out and say, first off, it's not going to be a rate freeze and, and Martin's already mentioned that before. And if people think that even get the sniff of the idea that that's what we're proposing, even if that's not what we're saying, the problem is going to be that there will be a significant number of people, maybe not 50%, it might only be 10%, but every one of those people who are actually believe that they're getting the same, paying the same rates next year as they're paying this year, and then find to their horror that they're paying $3 more than they were paying last year, they will see that as a betrayal, even if it's only something as very, very low as that. So I'm going to propose that we definitely have to include natural growth. I think to do otherwise would be financial suicide. And I think, frankly, to me, I would feel that I was acting irresponsibly, irresponsibly if I do that. That's not to say that if we don't do it, uh, there's a problem. But I just can't, can't see us frittering away the hard work that's been done over the last 15 years. The other thing is I think that we should definitely try to balance the budget at, at a minimum. Um, and we should try to index for the to just reclaim the same cost of service i mean if if the cost of petrol goes up we have to we have to allow for that if the cost of uh car cars goes up we have to allow for that all of the costs that we've got we, we can't just pay it next year or the year after or the year after i mean I'm, yes we can but it's like we're still paying it so um and I've, I've actually discussed this with a number of people within the community. And, and the, the thing that I said is, do you want to see services get cut? And the answer uniformly is absolutely not. And I said, if we were to save $40 a year, would you be happy to do that if it meant that over the next nine years after that, you would pay slightly more than you would otherwise do? Everybody that I've spoken to has said, no, I'd rather just leave things the way they are. I can manage. I definitely agree that we need to allow for those people who are struggling and a targeted level of uh, support for those people who need it, I think is absolutely responsible and we should do that. And I also agree that if we don't need to raise rates beyond what we are, uh, uh, if we don't need to raise rates beyond the need to simply um, prevent us from going backwards, then I think that would probably be a good where, area to go. Uh, I noticed that our neighbours are all looking at increasing their rates by 2 3%, whatever. I noticed that Light has suggested that they would uh, basically maintain this by freezing their rate in the dollar, but allowing the cost of uh, the, the um, valuations to allow the rates to go up. Maybe that is a way, and that and at least that way we could say that we've frozen the rate in the dollar and maybe that is a way that we could then maintain uh, the spirit of what we've tried to do. If I'm wrong, if every if 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 I uh, get uh, basically rolled on this, I, I accept that. I know this isn't going to make me popular. I'm sure there are people listening right now in the gallery thinking, "Who is this idiot, and why is he suggesting that we pay more rates?" I'm saying that I think sometimes these things need to be said. I I I don't feel uh, comfortable in being popular in the short term and then regretting that for the next nine years. Thank you. So John, you were next, then Carla, then Leone, and then David Habe. Thanks, Martin and Dave. A good, a good um, recitation. And I agree with probably everything you have said. I just want to hark back to uh, my original uh, notice of motion or question on notice rather, which was to the effect of um, what effect would a zero rate increase have on um, our budget for this year? The answer is it would be a significant effect and I accept that and I think um, we, I won't call it a sugar hit, but um, Unfortunately, I think we need to maintain the medicine that we have been taking for the last few years, which is reasonably modest increases from year to year, but we are keeping uh, 
up with everything. We're keeping up with services. We're keeping up with maintenance. And I think to dig us into a hole uh, in nine years time is irresponsible. And unfortunately, um, you know, I can identify with Dave's situation um, where, you know, we've, we've lost significant chunks of income from various enterprises. This is you know, this is what happens, unfortunately, but we find a way around it somehow. And I think to have a small um, discount this year, but a, but a huge hit in two or three or four years time is counterproductive. So I am realistic enough to know that we really need to keep, um, we need to keep pace with things. So option one with, um, a modest increase and certainly taking natural growth into um, the uh, equation is, is uh, essential. I think that's about all. Thanks. Carla. Um, I couldn't disagree more. I think on this mod modelling, it shows that we can actually do this. Um, and just, you know, I get what you're saying when we're talking about targeting people who are directly affected by the current crisis. But I think we're forgetting that this crisis is going to impact everybody in some way, shape or form, whether or not they've lost a job, it's going to touch them and it is going to cost people money. It's something that we can do here. And I mean, if we're worried about the long term projections that much, I think maybe we need to reassess our big project priorities. We can easily look at some of them and push some of them back um, to ease the pressure on council and make this um, doable, but I mean, from this modelling here, it shows we can do it. Um, it's going to be tough, but I think it's something that we can do for our community. It's a show of faith in them, and I think that they'll return the favour. It's not a debate, so I'm not going to go for another 10 minutes. Sorry, Leonie was next. Um, I think it's so. So, the purpose of the workshop is to look at um, potential options and I guess to provide some direction to the management team in terms of do we want to look at more options and, and I, I think that it is worth looking at, at more options um, obviously understanding that takes considerable work um, and we have budget time frames that we're trying to meet I, I think part of the challenge is that there are still obviously so many unknowns um, and every day you know, you hear about someone else who's lost their job that is quite unexpected. And I think there'll be all sorts of unexpected. And that's not necessarily about downturns from COVID. People are making decisions based on all sorts of things at the moment because there's pressures coming from all over the place. I haven't had a chance yet to look at the economic impact modelling that Martin sent around the other day. But obviously, there are some key industries that we know are impacted. Tourism, hospitality, retail, the arts, education and training. But as I said, there are other people who are losing their jobs or businesses making decisions that are impacts from all over the place. Um, we also are going to have increased costs for quite some time in terms of our ability to ensure ongoing public safety for use of you know, our services and buildings and whatnot. And we don't know what that looks like or for how long. Um, and I think there is going to be a need for us to be having some agility and flexibility to actually provide targeted support, support where it's needed as we work out where it's needed. Um, as has, has already been said, I think a fair few people who are impacted are not necessarily um, commercial rate payers or potentially residential rate payers. They may be paying rent in multiple spots and hurting all over the place. And, and also there's a huge amount of youth that are going to be impacted as well, and that impacts families and, and youth individually. So I think it would be remiss of us if there is time and ca the capacity in management team to be able to do the work, um, to have a look at what options there are to have some of that additional flexibility. And if it might be that there's a combination of, of potentially a modest rate increase, continuing to look at the hardship policy and potentially extending that in terms of no charge, you know, no interest charges, no fees for, for particular cases where it can be shown that there are extenuating circumstances. And, you know, have some sort of allowance in there for potentially having to actually increase the direct to business um, or direct um, initiatives similar to the, rec so the recovery plan that we approved yesterday. 
um, it might be that we need to is that we'll have a better and bigger and more meaningful impact by actually having some targeted programs rather than necessarily um, an, an across the board um, you know blanket rule so I think it is worth us actually exploring some other options if there's the capacity to do that and I guess that's the question back to Martin uh, with the capacity to put up some other options and plug in different rate outcomes um, is not overly significant it's when we start obviously playing with policy and those sorts of things um, remember we're going to do a consultation process so we could use that document to explore other ideas um, the the um, the concern I have in terms of reducing capital spends, whether it be the big project, where it be roads, where it be existing services, that's the exact opposite of what we should be doing as a government, in my view. Um, the cash can be managed. The concern is the operating. So removing costs associated with capital won't actually fix the long term operating position. Um, yeah, I guess the, the, the short answer, Leonie, is it depends what modelling you want done. If it's simply modelling to come up with a few other ideas about we could do this, this is the impact, do that, that's the impact without getting down into the nitty gritty of policy. Yeah, I'm sure Mark and I and team can turn that around reasonably quick. Um, but um, just depends how deep you want to get. Mark, do you want to add to that? The only point that I will add to that, the effect of building new assets does affect the bottom line through depreciation. So um, if we build more, it is hitting that operating line through depreciation. Um, unless we are reviewing our depreciation, useful remaining lives and condition assessments of those assets, which should be done during this calendar year for all the asset management plans and that may have the effect of also reducing depreciation if our assets are found to be in better order than we the last time we reviewed those so it does affect the operating in a good way if the assets are in a good condition and if but when we build more assets and we don't take away assets at the same time then we're adding to our asset portfolio which adds to depreciation um, there it's not a cash effect it is effective in increasing the operating expenses. But at the end of the day, if we keep the same number of assets, it does affect us in that we have to renew those assets sometime in the future. David Habeck was next. Thank you. I'd just like to endorse uh, my thoughts on, on number one. And I agree with what um, David DeVere has said and also John Angus. I was of the opinion, and I spouted this off many times, of wanting to keep rates down to zero, but uh, you always start at the bottom and you can work up. And, and I think the two options we've got have really done that. But now I can see that we may need to increase the rates by a small margin to keep us in line with the past years. And if we don't, things are going to get out of hand, so to speak. So I'd, I'd like to see option one brought up with a half a percent or a percent and to see what the the amounts are and how that's going to affect the general people. But also uh, think that what Marcus talked about as far as uh, relief or uh, um, target support, I suppose, for those people who are finding it really hard, I think that's a good idea because there's so many out there. And I think that if we do go down this track, we should be... It's how we put it out to the public and the reasons behind it, which will be success. I think it's, so the negotiation part of it, that's what I'm saying, should need to be right up there. And I think that if we do, do it that way, we should come out right. That's my views. Thank you. Bim. Followed by Tony. Thanks, Martin. Um, it's been some really, really good discussion and some good points put forward, but I just wanted to chime in and just reiterate some of the things that's been said by the federal, by the prime minister and our own premier and capital expenditure. We've already cut annual initiatives. What we've got left in there is dependent on grant funding. And I don't think there's a lot of flexibility to play around with that. If, if the money doesn't come through, we're not spending it, that money. So I think we've still got to push ahead 
the way in which we've been planning in that area. But if you don't move in some direction to try to recoup some of the shortfall, and I'm not saying we have to recoup it all, and I think you've already raised some very good points, which I won't go over, but there's still a fair percentage of our community. And I know that there's a heap of people that have been hit, and we've already heard examples from some of our own elected members. But let's not lose sight that some other people have done okay. And... Uh, and so, you know, if we take on the ideas, some people fill the barn, the barn in the good times, and they've got a little bit there for the bad times. And I think that's what we've got to really balance this out across how we tackle this, and just to make sure that if there's an opportunity to target the ones that we really need to help with some modelling or, or some discussions that uh, Mark, you've raised, I think they're the areas that we need to focus. But you know, as I said, there's, uh, and also, if we're really serious, we've got to look closely at our service levels, what service levels and what things are we duplicating, what things that we don't need now. We've just gone through a lockdown, well, restrictions, I won't use the word lockdown. We, we've just gone through restrictions and people have adapted really well with doing things different ways. We've now become more flexible in how we go about our businesses. Do we need all of the outlets that we've got at the moment? Is there other ways that we can deliver our services and put services on the ground in, in a way that, that, that people can still think, see things still happening? So it really comes back to if the only area you can play in is your operating budget, and that's the critical area. And if we're serious about all of this, uh, we've got to start looking and, and doing the deep dive. And I think uh, David DeVries rightly picked up with uh, over the last five years, we've cut the cloth pretty well. Uh, but if we keep cutting it, we're going to pay in the long run. So, uh, but it's been some great discussions. Well done. Uh, Tony was next, then followed by Cathy Troop. Yeah, thanks, Martin. I think the, the conversation tonight has really been very interesting and um, I can see, Carla, where you're coming from, but Dave, you set the ball rolling and John followed up with, and Dave as well. I think if we dig a big hole, uh, we're going to rue it in years to come and a modest increase. I think people will understand that. And as you mentioned, Bim, you know, there's some good people that have, have done have done well out of this. Um, Dave, you, you, you've got some a, a downside, but... Uh, lots of us have been working through this this period, and I think as responsible councillors and as a, as a council in general, um, I think we'd get more respect from people by actually biting the bullet now and having a modest increase rather than uh, trying to explain why we can't do things in years to come. Cathy True. Um. Thanks, Martin. Um, I'm just a bit curious, actually, um, if we were to look at targeted hardship policy, um, uh, would our criteria be different to other councils? How are we actually going to find out who we relieve, if that makes sense? Um, because I, I would like to see a deep dive into that, but um, where do you get that data from? Well, the main data set that we're using is um, economic modelling data that I've got through the RDA, but we can subscribe to a service that provides us that information. There's significant other levels of data around at state and government levels that you can tap into. Um, and you, you would structure any hardship provision such that it's got flexibility to deal with individual um, variations. Um, equally, you don't want to make it too bureaucratic either. So I think that was the good thing about our initial um, um, deferral is that if, if you'd been impacted in some way, we just said yes. But of course, a rebate is a rebate. So um, it's a reduction in the charge and we would have to look at a little bit more in depth. I know Mark's already looked at some of them, so I might just hand over him and can add some more detail. But there's plenty of data out there. It's not so much a data issue. It's about, yeah, we're where and how you're going to manage the relief process. Thank you. Some of the uh, councils that I've been uh, monitoring over the last few months 
that uh, we share with each other what we're doing. Um, one of those councils was Prospect that had a targeted approach that I was referring to before with the commercial zones where they had from the information provided by the federal government and the state government which industries were told to close. And so they just isolated those in their rating areas to say, okay, they automatically get um, a deferral of rates and a rebate. Um, and council just approved that, um, considered that and approved that because they knew they were being closed down for a certain period of time. And then there's the other councils, which um, like Martin has said, we have been a, a bit more approachable in our application process. We accept the applications that people say, and when they tick the box to say they've lost their position or their business has been closed, they only had to do that and um, submit that to us. Other councils in the city required the um, applicants to provide proof that they had um, been on job seeker or job keeper and provide that with their application form um, to ensure that um, they were getting legitimate claims to provide relief or some sort of rebate. So when we go into the rebate area in if that's what council goes through and approves for the next financial year and in relation to the hardship policy, we will certainly have to have some structured uh, rebate application processes, which may require um, the um, people who provide that application some evidence that they're in the situation that they're in to provide that rebate. At this stage, we're providing a rate deferral, which is not the same because we're still, council was still receiving that income, it's just delayed where rebate is where the rates are being remitted and credited and they don't have to pay. So perhaps councils, um, as I mentioned before, it will require a bit more administration because there may be some more processes that we have to put in place to make sure that we're getting uh, legitimate applications for those rebates. David DeVries. Just wanted to say, um, I've spoken to Tony Passon about this. The job seeker and job keeper are not, in fact, uh, without their flaws. Uh, for example, no, I won't go through the details of it, but um, while they would be a good start, I think we need to be a little bit more uh, flexible than that because um, I know people who are being disadvantaged seriously because of the 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 the, the, re the inflexibilities of some of those schemes. They, they are benefiting some people. I know people who are on the job keeper who are actually uh, better off than they were prior to it. So there have been winners and losers in that. So I don't want to reward people or give them a benefit who are already getting a benefit unnecessarily. So I guess I'm just saying I'd be cautious about following the the, the federal models. And I know that they're flawed. And, and in fact, I've spoken to the minister uh, uh, department about that. They accept that. But they their their rationale was we had to do it quickly and you know sometimes a good idea is better in today is better than the perfect idea tomorrow i accept that um and you know even my wife who's you know not being advantaged from from this and in fact is being disadvantaged accepts that as as the reality um so i just what i'm saying is i don't want to compound that problem or multiply it but those those systems are a little bit flawed i don't blame the governments for it i think they've done fantastic at doing what they've been able to do but we need to be a little bit cautious about just following their modelling because it was done very quickly uh, and it was done, had to be done quickly. So we've got a little more time. Thanks. I'd just like to put a, the the context of um, uh, requiring a greater hurdle for people that are already in stress and plus the staff at the other end that have got to deal with that. And um, certainly our rates team and our customer support team have had to deal with some very upset people and we and Zen, um, um not angry or anything, just it, and that does take also a people toll. So it's a very big issue for the individual that's got to ring us and have that conversation. It's also tough on some staff at times. And, um, you know, we are not uh, trained to that level of, say, um, those in the health system, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm certainly not saying that you shouldn't go the rebate line. Just understand there are people impacts, not just financial impacts. Mark, you might as well keep going. You've got one more slide. You really want to go with the next one? <laughs> I, I think we I think we should finish it off, yes. Haven't you been listening to the discussions? <laughs> Of course I have. <laughs>
So option two, um, <laughs> it takes at least 13 years for the operating position to get back um, into a surplus position, if not longer, um, because the long term plan doesn't go out that far at this point in time. Um, and um, that is not obviously after the conversation over the last um, 20 minutes or so where Council wants to explore any further for this discussion. Here, here. Well said. Well said. So um, from here, then um, what we'll do is we'll um, do some more, um, as Martin has mentioned before, scenarios, investigations into uh, an option um, similar to option uh, one, and we'll keep that one in the mix as well, um, and investigate other ways of trying to improve that operating position. Bearing in mind that Council did approve yesterday at the meeting for some more funds to go towards COVID-19, which is not built into this presentation because this was sent out on Monday. So that will affect that bottom line in that first year and um, um, and so forth. So um, we will take it on from there and do some more um, research and come back with another couple of options at 0.5% and 1% and the other things mentioned already as well. Okay, thanks, Mark. So I know, you, Tony, you've just done an ATT. I'll get to you in a minute. Um, can you just unshare, please, Mark? And um, yeah, so we'll put that together. I don't think we need to go into the spreadsheets on, on reseals, but if you've got some feedback, please feed that back to Matt. Um, we'll turn that around as quick as we can. Um, I know everyone's probably getting sick of workshops, but We've got to keep this rolling, so we'll hope also have rate modelling, hopefully by the end of the week, maybe early next week. So I'd like to call another workshop Wednesday next week. Um, and we have a further workshop, which is our normal one following week, and then hopefully we can get it to uh, a point that we can put a presentation to council uh, in a special meeting to get the budget and business plan moving. Tony, you did an attention. Yeah, thanks, Martin. Yeah, Mark just hit it uh, in his last couple of sentences with the one, you know, 0.5 and 1%. If we could have a spreadsheet or a, a, a sheet intimating what those really differences would be, that, that would be good. Yeah, yep, that's so. what we'll be doing. But I've also got to keep mindful the resolution that you passed as a council. So whatever we put to you will be multiple options because you've asked me to present a budget and a business plan with a zero. Yep. Okay. So you'll have to have that to pay yourselves, but that's what I have to present because that's what you've asked me to present. Over Red to you, the Mayor. Red wine time. Thanks, Martin, and um, thanks, Mark, for uh, putting that together and presenting it the way you did. It's uh, It's been some really good discussion and scoped up lots of uh, different thoughts and views. Um, it just demonstrates also that as we progress and move through this period, things change day to day. And uh, and I think that's where we've got to really be um, up to just being able to uh, be in a position where we can reflect what's going on around us and being able to be uh, aware of how best we can uh, achieve what we want to achieve, but also be um, be responsible for the wider community. And as I said earlier, take into account that, yeah, there has been some people really hit badly and are suffering, but there's also been some people that have kept their employment and have and have moved along reasonably well. So how best we come up with that? Um, once again, we'll just rely on our numbers people to present the data and then we'll have to go from there. But I think it's been a good exercise to see that uh, uh, the time of plenty doesn't always roll on and we've just got to be uh, conscious that at some stage, and I know when we amalgamated as council, we always said that at some stage we're going to have to make some hard decisions along the way. And I guess once you start looking at the operating budget, and as we said earlier, that's the area that we need to probably focus on. Uh, just reiterating again, the message was that Capital Works give employment and if we can make sure that we can pick up some of those funding options along the way and where we possibly can employ our local people. It just keeps our economy ticking along nicely. So thanks for everyone's contribution tonight. It's been been very, very good. Excellent. Thank you. Cheers, Ben. Thanks, everyone.
Yeah, thank you. Mayor, you might be able to send us out an email with 